is up guys welcome back to life on the wrist i hope you guys are having a safe week and that you're um, staying indoors and washing your hands as much as possible with this uh, COVID-19 going around right now. Hopefully when this when this video is released, um, we're slowly getting out of it, but you never know and um, hopefully you're taking the correct measures to keep those around you safe as well as just keeping yourself safe as well. What we're going to be discussing today is another watch release that is from the company Breguet. It's the Breguet uh, Classic 7137. This is a really cool watch. Um, it is inspired by some of their watches that they have created previously. Um, but I thought we would give you my initial thoughts just so you guys know I do not have this watch in my possession This is simply a watch about me giving you information about this is a video about me giving you information about the watch and giving you my thoughts on, on, on the watch itself So if you're looking for a video that actually has the classic 7137 um, This isn't the video for you. So um, but you should stick around because I'll give you some, some of my insights on it as well um, If you didn't see we did a video about a uh, group of 4C similar to this I think that was our last release so be sure to check that out as well and before we get into the watch um, uh, and we say every single video be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash a like button for this play game it's really really beautiful if you think it's beautiful you might as well smash a like button if you don't you might as well smash a like button as well so just a little bit of history this is um, this is a new play game it takes its inspiration from um, one of uh, one of the uh, Breguet uh, pocket watches that was created, as well as watches from the 1950s uh, through to the 1970s, especially with the um, way in which the uh, case and the dial are finished. Um, if you don't know anything about uh, Breguet as a company, Breguet is found, was founded by Abraham Louis uh, Breguet in 1775. We actually did a whole video where we go in, in depth into uh, Breguet as a legendary watch figure and how he uh, grew up kind of made his name for himself and some of the interesting things that he was able to accomplish during his time as a watchmaker. Um, so founded in 1775, um, since 1999, they've been part of the Swatch Group. Um, they're known for basically creating uh, absolutely incredible watches. Um, these range from very, very classical pieces, but also to some sports watches, if you think about the Breguet Type 20. Um, but they've known, Breguet is known for doing a lot of firsts. So they're in, in 1801, they created the first ever Turbial. In uh, 1780, they're known as creating the first ever self-winding watch movement. Um, and uh, in 1810, they're known as actually creating the first um, wrist watch. Uh, this was actually for one of the queens. I'm blanking on which queen it was, but <clears throat> that was um, something that Abraham, Abraham Louis Breguet was very, very involved in. Um, so that's a little bit of history on the watch on Prigi. If you want to know a little bit more about him as a watchmaker, be sure to check out our um, legendary watch figure episode where we discuss uh, Prigi because uh, he's very very influential in in watchmaking. Um, so this watch, like I said, is the Prigi Classic uh, 7137. It's really um, the significant part about this watch is really the way in which the dial and the case is finished. Um, if you look at the dial, you can see engine turn finishing, which is essentially making patterns where a watchmaker makes patterns with in a metal, which is um, not an easy thing to, to actually do. Um, just to give you set up the watch a little bit here so you understand what we're looking at. This watch measures about 30, 39 millimeters in diameter, so relatively wearable size. And it comes in white or rose gold. Um, it's got it either has a blue or a silver gold dial, which is really, really beautiful. Um, very, very classical. Um, and very romantic. Um, if you look at my memo sale, which I discuss a lot, but this is a little bit more sporty, a little bit more modern, this Breguet is a lot more classic, a lot more uh, reminiscent of the previous watches that Breguet has made. Uh, the complications, you're obviously going to get the time, hours and minutes, then you have a moon, uh, moon phase, an age indicator, you have the date and a power reserve laid out on the watch in a relatively, um, relatively unique way if you look at a lot of the other modern watches that have been released recently. Um, this is inspired, like I said, by a Plague pocket watch. Pocket watch. Um, it's the Perpetual Number no. Five. Um, if you look at the dial layout of the Number no. Five versus the dial layout out, out of this Classic Seven One Three Seven, they're almost identical. Um, I think it's really cool that they brought this uh, pocket watch design into a, into a wristwatch, but we'll get to, into that a little bit later. But like I said, um, it really does take inspiration from that, from the Perpetua number five. Um, I will say that the way in which the, the, the watch is actually finished comes a little bit more from the engine turning that was done in the 50s, 60s, and 70s from Breguet. Um, so it takes inspiration from a, a, few, a few different places. If you turn the watch over, you actually look at a fairly simple um, looking, very compact movement. This is the automatic caliber 502.3, so, um, 
created by uh, Brigui with 45 hours of power reserve. Like I said, it's very simple, very compact. It's got a, a rotor, which you can see some very nice finishing on it, but it's very, very compact and thin. And I think that's what they were really going for here is creating a watch that was extremely wearable. Um, ultimately, this is probably gonna fall into a dress watch category. That's exactly what you want to have. You want a very simple, um, simple movement that's relatively thin that fits really nice on your wrist and at 39 millimeters in diameter and i i don't actually know the width i want to say about six millimeters something like that um, i probably am wrong there um but uh, a relatively wearable wearable watch and i think that's what the the movement really aids itself to so just moving into my thoughts i really love how the dial is perfectly reminiscent of the the perpetual number five it, like i said it's almost identical if not <laughs> completely identical um, one of the things, if, even if you look at the hands of the watch, you can see the little circles at the end of each of those hours and minutes hands, which are exactly the same as the number five. I really like this because it's a little bit, it's not something you see very often. Uh, if you, if you don't, uh, collect, uh, pliegues with, with these hands, it's a, it's a different way of looking at how you can design an hour and a minute's hand. So really like that. I also like the fact, and I kind of mentioned this previously, but I like the fact that Brigue took a design that was initially in a pocket watch and moved it into a wristwatch. I've been, I don't want to say critical, but I've, I've, I've mentioned a few times that I don't like when watch companies, um, I need to phrase this correctly, uh, creating reissues is great. You know, it's, it's um, bringing, bringing into focus what watches really were significant for specific brands and, and design elements that are important to collectors right now. On the other, to add to that, um, I will say that creating reissue after reissue sometimes gets boring and it, it kind of, in my opinion, is people, these companies resting on their laurels and resting on what they're, they've created in the past to, to drive what they're going to sell in the future. And there's no, nothing wrong with that because I think it's extremely important to honor your past. But at the same time, I like when things move forward a little bit. You could say that Brigade is kind of resting on a pocket watch, um, resting their laurels on a pocket watch. Um, that they created previously, but I think the fact that it came from a pocket watch and now is a wristwatch, I think is a little bit different uh, of, of a situation. So I like the fact that they're taking pocket watches and, and being a little bit more, um, taking inspiration from pocket watches instead. Uh, I think there's a lot of room to actually do that type of thing. Uh, I created a video where I talked about how pocket watches perhaps aren't um, as desired right now, but they are probably going to be extremely collectible. Uh, I think if people start translating pocket watch design into wristwatches, I think this is a really great opportunity for watch companies to actually create something very, very unique, especially if their pocket watch history is very vast and very um, ingenuitive and, and, and they've created some really interesting things from their pocket watches. So I really like that um, that aspect of this. And I think uh, I think it's a different way of, of bringing to light what your watch company can do well and using your pocket watches as, as inspiration there is it's definitely, a, it's definitely a, an advantage for, for Brigade. And um, again, it kind of, it kind of just is a testament to what Brigade is possibly, what, po what Brigade is possible of doing and what they've done in the past to, to really do, do things very well. So you could say they're resting on their laurels. I think it's ingenuitive because they're using a pocket watch design. Um, I guess you can kind of slice it whatever way you want, but let me know in the comments what you think about this classic uh, 7137. I think it's a really cool watch. Um, it is, I think, about 40,000 US dollars, uh, so it's relatively expensive. Uh, if you compare what you could probably get for $40,000, that's a completely different discussion. Um, so you would have to kind of look at what your options are there. Um, I, I really don't like, men I, I don't like making statements about prices uh, because everyone has their own opinions about watch pricing and, and what is comfortable for you to, to pay for this type of watch. Uh, it's it's kind of up to you at that point so but i hope you enjoyed my my thoughts and, and at least gained some type of understanding about what this watch is um if you haven't like i said if you haven't seen our video about abraham louis uh, Brigier, it's probably in the side panel to be honest but um we also have um you can check out our channel and while you're at our channel be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos um it really does help us out i've got a lot of support after over the past couple of months as i always do and it's really been fun to, to create videos for you guys. Um, also, be sure to smash the like button on this video if you like this Brigade Classic 7137. 
And if you don't, um, just smash the like button either way because it's, it's nice uh, for you to do that. Also, um, be sure to check us out on our socials, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, we're at Life on the Wrist. So if you just search our name, um, you'll find us there. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.